Thank you, Janice. All right. Now it's time for our children's message. Nora, please come on up. As Jesus says, let the children come on to me. teach you all about the Holy Trinity. And there are three parts to the Holy Trinity. Let me get all my stuff out first. has three different colors. There's yellow, orange, and white. Well, God is one God. He is also three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Just like the pieces of candy corn has three colors in one piece of candy, God is three persons in one God. The yellow, can you put the yellow up here? Can you put the yellow? The orange, the bottom layer, the orange of candy corn represents God the Father. Just like the yellow from the from that foundation of the candy corn, God the Father who created everything is wonder wonder is in the world and foundation is the foundation of Trinity. The Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God is the Father and Father is powerful and wise. Can you put the middle one in? The yellow middle layer represents candy corn, the Son of Christ. It's the God, God the Son, Son Jesus Christ, who came to the earth to save us from our sins. Jesus is the bridge between us and God. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only Son. Jesus is the love, loving and kind. Can you put on the white top? The white top right here. The top layer of the candy corn represents the Holy Spirit, who helps us with to know God and give a godly and live a godly life. Just like the white color on the top of the candy corn, the Holy Spirit is always with us, guiding us from above. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will come and help you because the Father will send the Spirit and take my take to take my place. The Holy Spirit is helpful and comforting. Just like all three of these go ahead, Joe. Just like all three of these colors of candy corn are a part of the same candy. There are three persons in the Holy Trinity are all one God. They work together to help us and love us. I want you all to have your own Holy Trinity. Joe is passing out to the Holy Trinity. The candy corn tag will help you to remind you that God is one God, but he is also three persons. Where the yellow, orange, and white colors make up the candy corn, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all part of one God. On our closing prayer, and I have something for her too. I didn't leave her out. She got a different one though. For our closing prayer, thank you for being our loving Father, for sending Jesus to teach us about love, and for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us always. Help us remember that just like the candy corn has three colors, but in one candy, you are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all in one God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nora. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe.
So now we're going to go into uh, listening silence. We're going to take some time to just quiet our minds. And this was brought to our attention by Johnny Nett Jr. And it's out of, uh, um, historically, the Quakers valued and promoted silence. And so we're going to take some time to quiet our hearts, quiet our minds. We live in a very hyper and hectic world. And it's good and it's healthy to take some time just to be quiet. So please join with me and enjoy the silence.
Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate this spiritual discipline. And remember, you don't always have to say something. You can be silent. Remember that. It'll help you. It will help you. You don't always have to say something in response. You can just be silent. Well, welcome. I'm so glad that everyone's here. Uh, I'm encouraged that you're here. And I want to share with you uh, this sermon that I titled, Show Mercy. <coughs> and to start off with, I want us to go to Luke, which is in the New Testament, and that's on page 1,494. It's Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. the people about prayer and he gives them in this parable in this teaching he gives them an example of two men that are praying these two men have different approaches with God they approach God differently, very differently. And so as we're doing this, as we're reading this, I want all of us to think about how we approach God and also how we approach ourselves. Okay? The, this is, the subtitle is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Now the Pharisee, these are legal experts. They're wise, they're smart people. Smart. And the tax collector? Well, if he was collecting tax for the Roman government, from the Jewish people, he was not looked on kindly by other folk. Now the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Now, what is wrong with that from the, from the word go? He's judging other people right off the bat. He's judging other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. He's pointing out the very guy that's next to him in the temple praying. I thank you that I'm not like him. I fast, he said, goes on, I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. That's, that's actually pretty amazing. He fasts twice a week and he gives a tenth of all he gets. But he's judging He's judging other folk. I'm not like them. I am better than them. He's put a wall between him. He's put a, a wall between him and that tax collector. I am not like that person. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. Why do you think he wouldn't even look up to heaven? So humiliated, so humble. 
He's not even going to look up to heaven. But beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You see, the Pharisee put up a case. He put up a case with God. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all I get. The tax collector didn't do that. The only thing the tax collector said, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's all he said. But he spoke it. He spoke it. Both of these folks are speaking. They're speaking. And there's power in that. There's power in our proclamation. There's power in what you say. In what you say to God and to your brothers and sisters in your community. There's power in what you say. Because of what those people, those people say, they've got their judgment. Christ goes on to say, I tell you that this man, talking about the tax collector, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. We all fall short. Every single one of us does. There are times when I have fallen short, and I can surely tell you that I did not put up a case before God. I did not. I recognized my trespasses, and I went before God, and I asked for forgiveness. I asked for mercy. We fall short. But if you put up a case, you put up a case, I did it, I did this, I did this, I did this. Falls on deaf ears. Recently, very recently, I did my best to take my sailboat from Block Island to the mainland. And I went out with my friend. We went out, out 14 miles from Block Island to right here. We're going to uh, Portsmouth. So it's a little more, but it's 14 miles to Narragansett, Mount Narragansett Bay. It was a really nice day. It was beautiful. It was warm. It wasn't that long ago. And the wind was out of the north. So we had, when we set our sails, we were headed to Connecticut. And what we're going to do is then make a tack and then go east of the island and then back again into Narragansett Bay. And that would be our, that would be our, our course. So we set out. And, but right before we set out, I had a little problem with the engine. And it, the engine corrected itself and I said, okay, we are, we're out sailing. And then the wind dies down, right? Dies down. I knew there was going to be a change in the wind, so I said, let's start the engine up. Now we're far off the island. Let's start the engine up, okay? And we'll, we'll motor sail to the mainland. The engine wouldn't run right. The engine wouldn't start. It would start, and we'd run a little bit, and then it would die. And it's a diesel, and diesel engines are reliable. Once you get them going, they run. But this wasn't the case. And so, it was getting later on in the day, and I had to make a decision. But incidentally, why this was all going on, right? Has anyone ever seen a thresher shark? Has anyone ever seen a thresher? I'll draw, I'll draw you a picture of a thresher shark. They're a very unusual shark.
they look like your typical shark, right? They have this long tail right there. See that? It's called a, a thresher. Because of that long tail. See how long that tail is? That's cool. Thresher sharks get big. They're not a small shark. The max size is 20 feet. It's a huge animal. They can get up to 750 pounds. In front of the sailboat, not once, but three times, a huge thresher jumped. It was unbelievable. We're going along and I see this thresher jump out. It was unbelievable. At first I, started, I thought it was a dolphin. Huge splash. Came up again. And then I saw the long, long tail. And they use that tail to whip other bait. They whip bait, fish. They, they stun it. Three times that thresher jumped up. Went into the water. But then I had to make the decision. Okay. We're not going to go. I am not going to wait for this wind and get to the mouth of Narragansett Bay at 2 a.m. and then see if we can somehow motor up with this engine that's unreliable, motor up Narragansett Bay. I'm not doing that. We're going to turn this boat around and we are going back to Block Island. And we did. We went back to Block Island. We went into the mooring. We tied the boat up. We got into the dinghy. I rowed back to shore. And it was still, we still had a half a day left. And my buddy went home. And I went to my house. But I was extremely frustrated. I was disappointed. Because my objective was to take that boat to Narragansett Bay, go up Narragansett Bay and put it at the marina. That was my objective. And I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated that that didn't happen. That for the rest of the day, I was just, I was like, was really very, very disappointed in the whole thing. But looking back now, that this message is on show mercy, right? It's easy for us to show mercy. It can be easy for us to show mercy on other people, right? Sometimes it's very difficult for us to show mercy to ourselves, okay? I could have said, David, you did everything that you could have done to get that boat to Narragansett. You did. David, you went out and you sailed out far off the island in a beautiful day. You got the opportunity. No one here has ever seen a live thresher. You got the opportunity to see one of God's creations. I am fascinated by nature. I always have been. Since I was a little boy, I'm extremely fascinated. I got the chance to see a, a massive thresher jump three times in front of my boat. But that none of that mattered. It, it, I was like, none of that mattered. I had was so frustrated that I didn't get the boat over, that I didn't even see any of that. That it was a beautiful day, that I worked on my scaling sills, that we got to the, you know, that we did all this, and we do that. We do that. Sometimes our endeavors don't pan out as what we would like, as what we would like. But yet there's still, still great things to learn in our endeavors. And yet we think of them, we cast a bad light on them sometimes. Cast, and it's by showing mercy on ourselves, on our endeavors, so I've had to stop and be like, look at all that you're so fortunate, so fortunate to be able to do that. Just to be able to do that. Extremely fortunate. Don't be, 
Don't be so down. Look at all you've done. It's not easy to do. We can do it for other people. We can do it. We can, it's easy for us to show mercy on other people. I'm not saying it's easy. It's always easy. But a lot of times when people do things, we can say, oh, well, you know, this and that. But when we ourselves do it, we, like, we can beat ourselves down. We really can. And we can change a, a great thing a great thing by our, by our thinking. We can change the perspective to where it's not, where it's not a great thing. And, the two, and these two people together, these two, the Pharisee and the tax collector, one was justified. One bit was justified and the other wasn't. And the one that was justified was humble. They went humbly before God. They went humbly to God. Sometimes when I go to my prayer closet, my prayer room, I have to stop myself. I gotta stop myself and be like, think about think about to whom you're speaking. Stay humble. Stay humble. I didn't make it in that sailboat that day. I made it many other times, but I didn't make it that day. But I saw beautiful things. But because my focus was I had to do this, I didn't see the blessings that God had all around me. And we do that. I do that. That's just one example of many times that we can have the most gorgeous sunsets or sunrises all around us. God's creation is all around us. The Holy Spirit is always with us. And yet, because we can get ahead of ourselves, we can get distracted by the cares of life, It's important to it's important it's important to have compassion and show mercy on yourself to to say that you to realize and recognize that at the time you did the best that you could do you did it you tried the best that you could do it may not have panned out as what you as what you wanted to but you did the best that you could do at that time and. Be grateful for those experiences. Be grateful for the people that were in your life at that time. I often and recognize and re and recognize that you know I got this from Joe and Nora, right? I got this from Joe and Nora, and it was and it is a key, and it had to do. It represents. It says thank you for. Thank you for being a key part of our lives. But I brought this up in a lesson with that order in that things take time. Mm -hmm. Things take time. The food that we have downstairs all took time. There's people, that gathering, Joe and Nora, when Joe said, oh, we're gonna set this, we're gonna set this wedding date. It was a year. It took time to plan. It takes time. Be patient with yourself. We take time. Our endeavors will take time. You can also take, take, take it one step at a time. You don't necessarily have to do everything today. You can just go and do small things and work on it and be successful in small things, and those build momentum. God showed mercy to the tax collector. He was humble. He went humble before his God, to humbly before God. 
Be kind to yourself. Truly be kind to yourself. And understand that you did the best you can. I did the best I can at the time. I may have fallen short. I may have slipped up with these things. But that's human too. That's understandable. Do, but be compassionate to yourself. This message is show mercy. And I want you, I, I truly want to um, get this point across that it's as much as you show mercy to the others, as much as you as, as you're like Christ to other people, also be that to yourself. Forgive yourself for things. Don't beat yourself up so much. God loves you. This church loves you. We live in a very beautiful world. We truly do. There are blessings all around us. Our family members are blessings. This church is a blessing. It's important, to, it's important to take time out and be grateful for our blessings and be grateful for each other. I say this often and, and I'm working on it. Tell the people that you love that you love them when you see them. Show mercy on other people It's capable you're capable of doing that. Show mercy on yourself. You did the best you can with what you had. This world is not easy. It's difficult. And take the time to look on the beauty of nature that's around you. Don't overlook the beautiful things that are around you. They're there. Amen. Okay.